Ah, so this eclipse season with Pluto stationing direct um, and through to the 17th of October and Eris in the North Node approaching their conjunction and all the things is so intense. I'm recording this on October the 13th. Happy Venus Day, Friday the 13th, the day before the uh, solar annular eclipse on the 14th. But I'm going to talk to you about the lunar eclipse that's coming at the end of the month. And the good news is that even though it's rather an intense eclipse in, in many ways, I actually think it's got the potential for what's breaking through and transforming now to bring a great shift and healing. So let's dive in. But before I dive in, um, let's um, ask you to subscribe to my channel and also to give it a thumbs up and to leave me a comment, but also consider checking the little bell next to the subscription so that you get a little red notification on YouTube when I upload new content so you don't miss the new videos. But anyway, let's dive in. I'm going to pull a card. I have not pulled it yet. So here we go. Here's the card. Actually, let's let me just look at the chart while I pull the card for this big eclipse. I think it's still quite tense, but also really uh, got great potential. So hang on. Here we go. Ah. So I pulled the King of Vessels. You can see the card. This is the Red Seeds Tarot again here. Now, let me tell you uh, what the King of Vessels is about from the book, because these cards have their very own kind of energy. This is actually Poseidon. Now, it says, I am turbulent. But let me read you the, the quote and the soul journey for this card. These cards have very specific kind of interpretations. So the water in a vessel is sparkling. The water in the sea is dark. The small truth has words which are clear. The great truth has silence. And that was uh, Rabindranath Tagore. The soul journey. The king holds powerful emotions, which means that at times he can be more than a bit of a drama queen. Underneath his power is a sensitive soul who can sometimes wallow in a pool of conflicting feelings. You may sink or swim if you try to navigate these emotions. Sometimes he will read us poetry, ask how we are and genuinely inquire if there is anything he can do to help us. And um, he's kind, learned and compassionate, appreciates the arts and devours philosophy. His soul, like his waters, hold great depths. And his moods, like his storms, come and go with a fair amount of noise and dark drama. Occasionally, he shakes us up, um, for he is the ultimate force of water whose energy knows no barriers and no form. However, he will always be prepared to listen to our issues and problems and is exceptionally understanding. He will offer us advice if we are brave enough to ask. Sometimes he will just quake and rumble. And do we run or do we listen? Of course, he may just give us a hug if that's what's needed. Now, how I read um, this card for this eclipse is that it is a Taurus uh, full moon eclipse but there's so much energy in Scorpio on this eclipse and Scorpio is uh, a very dramatic deep water sign however this to my mind is the big pull to lean into the king of vessels for ourselves to go to my favorite topic self-care but let's have a look at the chart and have a look at the astrology and um, and what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to just share the chart. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this and then we're going to stop sharing the chart and I'm just going to talk about it. So look at all of this. The eclipse is on October the 28th, 2023. So it's actually 
a 10 month, so that's a one, and a 10 day, two plus eight is another one. So there's going to be a lot of new beginnings. Full moons can act like new beginnings as much as new moons at times. And new moons can be endings and new beginnings as well. Uh, I think there's a common law that, you know, new moon is a new beginning. Um, full moon is an, a fulfillment. Well, they kind of both have both energies in many ways. So I just want to show you this eclipse. It's a Taurus eclipse, five degrees of Taurus. But it's a partial eclipse because the moon and the north node are quite far apart and in fact, in separate signs. So, um, but it's no less powerful for that because it is a North Node eclipse and Eris is on the North Node and they're applying to an exact conjunction on November the 27th. So this is a, you know, we're rattling and rolling and being shaken and stirred in so many ways. It's also pretty close to Jupiter and Jupiter is exactly opposing Mars on that day, as I talked about in my Mars in Scorpio video. But look at all this energy in Scorpio. We have Haumea, who's going to be there for about 20 years, the fertile fertility energy. We've got this uh, asteroid Lilith, the talk to the hand um, Lilith, um, rebellious kind of teenager. We've clearly got the sun in Scorpio opposing the moon. We've got Mercury still under the beams of the sun right the way through the eclipses, uh, but about conjunct Mercury and oppose that Jupiter. And we have Ceres in Scorpio. So it's really concentrated eclipse energy. Also on the south node, because I mentioned we have Eris, the shit stirrer, conjunct the north node. We have Speaker, which is luckily is one of the most fortunate uh, fixed stars conjunct that south node. We also have around that five, six degree mark, we still have this Pholus, Pandora's box centaur in Capricorn opposing Vesta, kind of revealing all this um, kind of um, uh, what's wrong with our structures of um, our life. Pluto's been doing a number on that but so is Pholus following uh, Pluto and Vesta's the flame of the hearth, but our, also our own inner flame of focus and devotion and uh, safety and security in Cancer. We also have Juno aspecting this eclipse. I'll be talking about that. One other thing I will be talking about, though, is this T-square, all this zero degree energy. And Saturn is stationing to turn direct just uh, a week after this eclipse on November the 4th. This is Sedna and we've got Haumea of course at zero degrees but we have Hecate the way shower at zero degrees so we've got a whole load at that four card number taking a leap new beginnings the zero the alpha the um, the omega the infinite possibilities number. So there's quite a lot to talk about, but I'm going to go through it all quite quickly. But first, let me talk about the five. This is a five degree um, eclipse and five really is the number of personal freedom, of individual individualism. It's also a number of change, um, of free thinking, um, uh, kind of energy it can also be a little bit reckless and self-indulgent but it is a number of change for sure it's also uh, said to be the most prevailing number in nature and art and it symbolizes fire and the stigmata and you guys know that i also love venus and of course it signifies the five-pointed star so there's um, a lot of change coming as if we didn't know and a lot of turbulence, which means we need a lot of self-care. So this is a Taurus eclipse, however, and Taurus is about stability, sustainability, values. Taurus can be very um, um, stubborn and stick in the mud, though, but it's something we've been working on for a long time because we've got um, Uranus in Taurus and it's Venus ruled and we've had a Venus retrograde 
this year. And so uh, we've had a lot of this Venusian Taurus energy, but just think about Taurus. Taurus is earth. Taurus is calm, positive, patient, reliable. It's a yin sign. It's it's um, the divine feminine for the want of a, um, um, a better word. It's also, you know, quite connected to nature, the body, values, material world. It's very sensual. On the negative, Taurus can be quite stubborn and non-moving but also quite materialistic. Although I was found that Taurus really mm, kind of likes um, the good things in life more than just like hoarding kind of thing. But anyway, either way, Taurus is a very calming, um, security oriented sign. So this full moon is in the sign of Taurus and it's close to, uh, sorry, it's this full moon eclipse even bigger but it's close to Jupiter as I said so Jupiter is expanding everything that's expanding this pull towards this Taurian energy and it's kind of building on a lot of energy that we've had over the last couple of years as we've had eclipses with the nodes in Taurus and Scorpio with the north node in Taurus yes on this one the north node has moved back into the sign of Aries, new beginnings, new starts, drive, pioneering, and Eris is there shaking things up for the outsider. But all of this indicates that this is pulling us towards a more sustainable way of living in general. And to it's also a call really to um, get into your body and very grounded and very connected with nature to do my self-care, my favorite topic, extreme self-care. And I'm talking about disciplined, plodding, steady self-care. I'm not talking about pampering. I'm talking about deep self-care of things that make you feel very grounded, very well, very whole. Now, Venus rules this new moon, of course. Sorry, full moon. Oh, sorry, still got the COVID fog brain. So you have to forgive me for the odd thing like that. And Venus is also um, in Virgo. Venus is in another Earth sign. Um, I did a whole video on Venus in Virgo. I like Venus in Virgo. She's very... Um, um, of service oriented, very humble, but also very much about being whole in mind, body and soul and on focusing on that grounding and health as well. And so I do love that uh, this is a very earthy full moon. And, and so this is what we're being pulled towards. So towards this full moon, I think it's about, you know, <laughs> the memes calm down, <laughs> you know, or keep calm. That's the one as well. Keep calm, keep calm. Because uh, all of this is saying, just settle down, just really kind of calm down, get back to earth, realize that we have to connect with ourselves, take care of ourselves, take care of each other, and just be more sustainable and less kind of erratic and change to be more of that. It's it's quite the powerful energy. But then we have the Scorpio. <laughs> and Scorpio is the deepest water sign, as I mentioned with the card, with the Poseidon card. And Scorpio is about diving deep into the soul and the psyche, the soul's needs. What do you need? Um, you know, uh, what nurtures and nourishes your emotions and your most deeply bonded relationships. I have a feeling that, um, and I mentioned that again in the Mars in Scorpio video I did for the whole uh, period. Um, it's also about tuning into those deep emotions, supporting yourself, um, supporting your most deeply bonded relationships and saying nothing else matters. This is fixed energy. It's saying dive into wholeness, dive into, you know, let's let's go back to that card um, 
from the king of vessels. Because remember, I said he's uh, working within you. This is not really about anybody else, but this is about the king of vessels um, uh, really kind of uh, being kind, learned and compassionate to yourself. Um, it's about going into those deep soul depths and it's really um, kind of about sinking into that water of emotions. But some quakes and rumbles may be sending you into these fertile waters of growth. And water also is very eroding. OK, and this is on the south node with speaker. This is saying we can't keep this up. This is about water washing away. Incidentally, though, with this much water, there could be literal floods, but let's let's not go there. <laughs> but there's going to be floods of emotions. It's a really emotional full moon. You know, all the events that we've got going on in the world and perhaps in your own lives, I know I have in mine, have perhaps shaken and stirred you a little bit. But Scorpio has these hidden strengths and depths Mars in Scorpio is really strong. Mars and Jupiter are opposing each other at 11 degrees, which is a master number. This is saying to tap into your deepest inner resources and to get support if you need them, to nurture your soul's desires, to nurture your deepest feelings, to feel those feelings, to uh, release anything that's kind of holding you back and to move more into this uh, grounded, sustainable uh, way of living. OK, so the speaker, the fixed star is also on um, the south node of this eclipse. OK, so the speaker fixed star is um, a kind, kind of a, a very interesting energy, actually. It's said to be one of the um, uh, luckiest stars. It's said to give success, renown, riches, sweet disposition, love of art, science, um, all those things. Um, but I will tell you that um, I have a good friend who uh, researches history and charts and those kind of mon more mundane things. And Speaker is really connected with Israel, by the way. And um, in incidentally, Asteroid Israel was um, conjunct Speaker as well in all this drama. So something is giving way in that region of the world. But this as without, so within. Something is giving way. Something is being left behind with um, Mercury right through these eclipses being under the beams of the sun. There's negotiations and ideas going on behind the scenes. Mars in Scorpio is cutting right to the heart of the matter. And again, this will be in your own life as well as everybody else's series in Scorpio is bringing probably some um, grief, some sense of grief and some sense of loss. But it's also about nurturing and nourishing those that really have meaning of matter in your life. Asteroid Lilith conjunct Haumea, that's kind of saying we have to restore this more interconnected, um, balanced um, um, yin yang relationship in our world. So this, um, it doesn't look unfortunate, this full moon, but I think in the lead up to it and what's coming from the time we're in as I record this is going to lead to this full moon and something is going to uh, be giving way and something is going to be released that will possibly lead to a more fortunate future. Okay. Now then, we do have, as I said, we also have aspected by this full moon. We have this Pluto-Vesta opposition, and that's in aspect to Juno. Juno has joined Venus mm. in Virgo, uh, reminding us that, you know, we are here to remember our interconnectedness, to remember that we are being, of, that we are of service to each other, and, uh, you know, this theme keeps coming up and up again. 
and remembering that if we want to be coming into wholeness, we have to think about having meaning, usefulness, and how we can serve the greater good in whatever way it is in your life. But it's a one big part of all of this energy is this Aries North Node with Eris conjunct that's building. And it really is about saying, how can I be a part of this change and how can I contribute to this for the good of all? Because Eris, if you remember, she uh, takes a stand for outsiders. She takes a stand for the marginalized. She shakes things up so that we're kind of forced to take the stand. She rules, she reveals um, the um, unfairness in society. And we can see all of that happening. It's just happening all over the world and probably in our own lives as well. And then we have this T-square. We have um, Saturn stationing um, direct in Pisces at zero degrees Pisces. Saturn has been helping us to erode a lot of limiting beliefs and also to create boundaries. But it's also related to this water energy again, this Poseidon. Saturn has been saying we have to surrender to this interconnectedness we have to remember and we have to remove any limiting beliefs and blocks um, that have come up that actually say that we are not all one we are uh, we because we are we are all connected everything is connected and then Saturn is opposing Hecate and Regulus the king star and Hecate is saying the way forward is that more feminine interconnected energy that wholeness that being whole unto oneself and then kind of being in that priestess energy to help others feel that and this is all forming a t-square to sedna which really means um um uh, sort of our future through coming through crisis big change sedna's bringing the big crisis which actually means crossroads as we move into this new paradigm so in so many ways this is a powerful powerful full moon and i just can't emphasize enough that this energy really particularly uh, the scorpio and the south node energy is saying let go of hanging on to power We've had that message through the eclipses for the last couple of years, but we haven't quite got it. <laughs> but letting go of this power manipulation also, but of seeing into, I think there's a big element of this with all this Scorpio energy, with Mercury and Mars in there, conjunct the eclipse of, you know, it's things are going to be revealed. Secrets are going to be revealed about power games, about power manipulation, um, and where people have been disempowered as well. And it's all a push to move towards that North Node again, and that Taurus, that more patient, grounded, connected energy. So really doing a grounding um, um, activities anytime is good. But again, moving towards that self-care, kind of maybe take up walking, um, take up some more disciplined, patient approach to change. And really, then that's the way that we'll find the freedom that we seek. So I'm just going to remind you again to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> And I'm going to read you the symbols and then I'm just going to kind of sum it all up. I don't want to go on and on because this time, you know, I've done several um, videos, but um, actually one, one, one thing I do want to um, refer you to is this five pointed star, you know, relationships, connection, Venus, Venus ruled. We are about moving to a more loving, connected world. And the astrology is pushing us that way. But um, are we listening? And it's really about descending into our humanness rather than all this nonsense about ascendance and all that kind of thing. This is it. This is home. We are humans. We are here on Earth. 
to be in this human experience and that's what we're being called to and to nurture and care for um, this home that we have in a lot of ways all right so the chandra symbol for um this um full moon so we go to taurus six is a pink diamond so a soft gentle color manifesting through a perfectly hard and clear substance gentle yet utterly potent the mystery here concerns attraction and repulsion. Love attracts those who need it and repels all negativity. negativity. Love reaches out to give of itself, yet is also the most powerful of defences. Pink, incidentally, is one of Venus' covers, uh, colours. Um, he refers to an Omega symbol. This is John Sandbach, who channeled the Chandra symbols. He says the Omega symbol is soft and receptive. And the um, Omega symbol, incidentally, is a man charges water with healing energy. And he says the diamond is hard and enduring. The degree itself contains these opposites and expressing the truth that love is the perfect healer. What better message is that? Okay. And then we have the Sabian symbol. Again, gives me so much hope in these challenging times. The Sabian symbol is a bridge being built across a gorge. James Burgess in his commentary says, this is building bridges to end separation finding a way to end separation and form group consciousness. Following a catastrophic setback, it can feel like the earth has opened up to swallow us. And doesn't it feel a little bit that way right now? But the best way to counteract the sense of separation and desolation is to engage in a challenging community project that gives substantial proof of our involvement and importance in life. Now, other, um, other um, um, words about it coming from some other people are about you going to the higher power and about, you know, creating, uh, using that higher power to bridge that gap or the gorge because doesn't it feel like we're just so separate at, at the moment? This full moon is giving this opportunity to really move back into interconnectedness and come together. And I do see some signs of it. So I hope you do in your life anyway. I'm just, uh, no, I think that's the, um, it's also happening within. Of course, it's between our own neurons, as Mara says. Each connection we make allows for more connections to be made. The stronger it is, the more it will hold. When many are faced with the same lack of connection, a forming of community allows the coming together of knowledge that one alone does not hold. This in turn produces results one alone would not achieve. So the overall message of this powerful time and this powerful eclipse is this coming together in deeply bonded connection and connection with all that is our own bodies, the material world, nature, the cosmos, um, despite what's being thrown at us. It's got to, because this is in fixed signs, Taurus and Scorpio are fixed signs. This is really about making things real, getting back down and and stopping all this kind of um, um, separation, yeah, <laughs> you know, of coming into these deeply bonding, of really connecting with each other. To go back to all that energy of Scorpio, this is the deep psyche as well, in the realms of the occult and the hidden and the magical. And it's saying, you know, build these deeply bonded emotional connections for this more sustainable future and play your part. 
it's astounding to be quite honest and then we've got this t square that's you know really pushing us to change towards this more sustainable energy and interconnected energy of well of wholeness and coming back into community with each other so how that will play out in the outer world i do not know but i hope you can see how it's playing out in your own um, I, I would really focus on, yes, your connection with no, nature, your connection with self-care, your connection with being stable and solid and rooted. That's another good Taurus word, but also in your deeply bonded relationships. So until next time, I'm going to get this uploaded. And on the 14th, I'm actually going to be um, seeing the new moon eclipse. So um, I'll leave you to watch this and um, and I hope it gives you hope in what's right now a really challenging time. Much love to you.